What's up guys, it's Denadon here, and today I am back in Kerbal Space Program, as I haven't played this in a while, and I decided I wanted to show off something new that I've done lately, which is this. It is basically a crew transportation shuttle that I use for, you know, moving people to and from my stations. Now look at that, you can see the shadow going up the building and then disappearing as we zoom in. So, as you can see here, the ship is basically just a pod, you've got a fuel with aero spike beneath it, some control surfaces, RCS, some lights, and then the jet tanks that are actually about half full of fuel, and then with the, you know, the turbo jets on the bottom. Now, these are basically the key to this design, because they are what enables it to go up to, you know, ridiculous altitudes. And I fly it like a space plane, I get all my speed, pretty much, in atmosphere. So that way the actual rocket is being saved for just in flight. But anyway, I've sped up time here as we're moving along. So as you can see, we're climbing up. Now just keep an eye on the crew's faces there. You can see Jeb is happy as always, whilst the other two are terrified. Now Jeb is staying as pilot here, whereas the other two are going to be traded with two of the guys already on the station. But here we go, nice beauty shot there with a bit of lens flare as we pick up speed. Now I've switched back to normal time, so you can see, you know, I noticed this bug where I've got no intake air, apparently, yet these engines are still working fine. Like, as you can see, none of the intakes have got any air, supposedly, and yet the throttle is still coming from these engines. As you can see here, we're still getting thrust, and the specific impulse is still going, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I think that's a bug, but I'm just going to leave that alone, I think. But yeah, back into time acceleration, nice shock heating effects as we go through the atmosphere, picking up gratuitous amounts of speed now. And you can see I'm keeping an eye on the fuel tanks because I want to know exactly when that fuel is going to run out. Because I'm going to ditch these engines either when they run out or when the engines start to actually flame out. Because with this air bug, I don't know when they're going to flame out, so it's a bit of difficulty. But you can see here, I'm trying to keep from gaining too much vertical speed just trying to get, you know, faster as soon as I can, and we're doing pretty well here so far. This launch profile is, like I say, very similar to a space plane, but yet, yeah, here we go. We're back into normal time. You can see the fuel is almost out, so getting ready to ditch those, and then as I'm starting to prepare it, you know, as I can see, check the engines, make sure they're going, and we start to lose the thrust, so ditch them. The parachutes didn't deploy, but they're on there, so let's assume they're going to be recovered. And now we're on just the aero spike, so we've pitched up to try and get more altitude. And now it's basically, you know, fly it like a rocket. We just gotta get some speed up. And you can see here we're targeting the Solitude Station. So I've waited until it's close enough to us that we should be able to go directly for an encounter or a rendezvous. But we will have to see how we go. So it's in a 150 kilometer orbit, so you can see me working away here. We've got a couple encounters, but they're not good spacing. But that's okay, we're not in orbit yet. So cruising on into orbit here, then once we switch out into, you know, regular speed out of the atmosphere, we put the panels out. Now it's trying to get that encounter. So tweaking around with the maneuver nodes here, and there we go. Uh, under two kilometer encounter in, you know, less than one orbit. So that's pretty good. Like, you know, it's great even. I usually have to wait quite a while to catch up. I'm not very good at timing them. But anyway, you can see I'm using the new features from the SAS where I've told it to match the maneuver by clicking on the bottom left. And what that's doing now is, as you can see, it's ensuring that the ship is always being pointed at the ve vector for the maneuver node. So there we go, we're angled right, and now I'm just waiting for the burn time, and there we go. Just a quick burn this one, you know, circularize, and then we'll have to do a trim burn, I think, later on. Dreader, I don't actually remember, this is all post-commentary, because, well, with Kerbal Space Program, it's easier to do post-commentary, given, you know, a lot of the stuff can be quite slow and tedious at times, which is maybe not the best viewing, but I don't know. But anyway, yep, we're switching on over, we're in orbit now, we've got that encounter nicely, and you'll see that message came up, I'm not sure why that comes up, I think that's simply to do with when you turn off the SAS, it doesn't know what to do anymore. So I've just set it to point it to the prograde vector and then some time acceleration until we catch up with the station, which you can see here is slowly catching up with me. And here we go. Coming in again, this is all accelerated about three times plus whatever I've added in game. It's just your typical rendezvous on burning to match speeds. 
then I'm going to actually start burning towards him. I'm, again, I'm using the system with the SAS, makes it easier to point where I want to go. And, you know, it's actually sort of like an autopilot, but it makes it a lot easier if you're not good at flying. Although this thing is actually pretty easy to fly, so I shouldn't really say that. But regardless, we're coming on in. Nice view of the station zooming in towards us, because, you know, although we're going pretty slow relative, we're still zooming over the surface of the planet. Open the docking port there, now let's actually switch to the RCS on and match the inclination. You can see here I've got the station pointed north-south. That makes it really easy to orientate with your craft, so that's what I've done here. I've got the ship pointing south and now I've just got to find the right position and move it in. Chase camera is really good for this because as you can see it makes sure that all your movements match up with what you're seeing, which is immensely helpful. And then also you can see I'm trying to use the nav ball here at the moment, it hasn't got the information, but then as the target comes up I can start using that and the other various vectors to ensure I'm actually aligned with the target. So just a bit of fiddling around here, get ourselves lined up, just going to get some altitude now and there we go. Now we can just start, you know, creeping on forwards and then as you see here, it's nice and slow, planet rotating beneath us, switch back on to normal time here. So you can see that, you know, docking is a fairly slow process, but when you've done it enough times, you start to get pretty good at it, or at least I like to think so. So just a slow cruise in, and then there we go, a nice successful docking, and that's our station. You can see another ship docked on the other end. But yeah, so now it's time to transfer all the crew over. So turn the lights off, and now we can start doing the whole dance, you know, make sure that everyone we're taking on is there. Kenny Kerman, one of the guys on the station already, with the greatest name ever, is now about to go on his way home, along with another guy whose name I don't remember. I think I picked John Roy, but I'm not sure. Whereas the other guys are staying there, and Jeb, well, he's needed to fly this thing back home, because, of course, we're not leaving this in orbit. We've got to bring it home as well. Now, I'm aiming to bring it back at the Kerbal Space Center here, but I actually slightly misjudged, but that's getting a bit ahead of myself. We've got to undock first, so we've undocked. The lights are helpful, again, for measuring distances. Slow bit of burn. The music sounds funny and time acceleration, but that's, again, something to be expected. Control from the pod again. Let's close that shield up, because we don't need that, you know? It's going to get exposed to re-entry heating, supposedly. So we want to ensure that's all safe and all. Again, using the vectors, we're pointing retrograde now, so we're in the right position to start burning. You can see we're now basically opposite the space center. I've got an actual beacon on the space center here that I can target, which sets me my distances. And yeah, so I decided, oh, I'll go about 40 or 30 kilometers or so. I said, that'll be fine. Turns out it was a little bit like, you know, too aggressive. I ended up stopping short, like more than I was supposed to. But anyway, I've put the panels away. We don't want them breaking off. Nice shot of the sun with Kerbin below us. Still hoping we can get clouds in the stock game, because this is entirely stock. Like, I you know, I've not used any cheats or anything here. This is just a stock game from the, you know, the Steam in-store, because I've been playing that mostly. But yeah, as we come in here, it's about here that I realize I'm actually going to fall short. So you've got the aero spike shooting us, and yeah, we're, at least we're on the same continent, so that's close enough, I suppose. But yeah, burning off the RCS here, or trying to, because that's stuff you don't want to bring back with you, it's kind of toxic. Parachutes are deployed to slow us down, and we've got no landing gear, so we're going to have to kind of soft land this, but thankfully we've got tons of fuel, so we're drifting down slowly, little bit of burst from the throttle, and there we go! successful touchdown. So yeah, it's just a simple ship. It works. I just wanted to show you the mission, but I'm Denedon. This is Kerbal Space Program and safe landings.